Adrian Broner loses to Blair Cobbs. Let's talk about it right now. This is Power Grind Boxing, courtesy of Power Grind Sports, where we're dedicated to the grind and dedicated to you. That's why we do what we do. We're talking about the biggest names in sports and entertainment. This is what's hot in the world of sports. Now, first and foremost, I want to encourage you to turn your dedication into domination of delivering positive energy and information, bringing certified hip-hop sports motivation and entertainment. Okay, so it went down Hollywood, Florida, Seminole, Hard Rock, Hotel and Casino, right? Blair Cobbs hands Adrian Broner a unanimous decision defeat in a 10-round welterweight boxing exhibition. When I tell you, you could just really see the ring rust that existed, man, I was like, whoa. Now, Adrian Broner, he is a former world champion, and he has faced a series of unfortunate events. Now, when this fight, you know, he was losing. He lost his uh, mouthpiece four times in the fight. He got knocked down. I even heard that he lost a tooth in the second round. Now, the judges scored the fight decisively in the favor of Blair Cobbs. Um, one judge had it 97-91, the other 96-93, and the other one 96-93, all in favor of of Blair Cobb getting that unanimous decision. You got me? Now, one of the things that I noticed during this fight, right? Let's say the second round, right? I'm going to say that the second round between Adrian Broner and Blair Cobb, I'm going to say that set the tone of the entire fight because Blair Cobb made Adrian Broner hit the canvas. You got me? And that seemed to, you know, shift everything that happened after. Now, Adrian Broner, he did get back to his feet. He was trying to put it in his mouthpiece. He couldn't, you know, his mouthpiece, it fell out. You know, he hurt his arm. He tore his shoulder. <sighs> it, it looked different. Um, so he was trying to put his, he was trying to pick his mouthpiece up with his gloves and put it back in his mouth, but he was not successful. Eventually the referee grabs his mouthpiece and put it in, you know, but it, you could just see that Adrian Broner was really rusty. You know, he just really was suffering from ring rust. And, but like I said, that second round set the tone for the entire fight. Now Broner was swinging with aggression but he was not consistently swinging and he was not consistently doing enough to keep Blair Cobbs honest you got what I'm saying because he, I'm telling you you could see the old Adrian Broner but he was not consistent he was not letting his hands go and that's one of the problems that people are always citing when they talk about Adrian Broner, but Blair Cobbs, he was maintaining his composure and he was effective from round one to the last round. You got what I'm saying? So, but I will say that this fight, it was, it was, I liked watching the fight. The reason why I like watching a fight because I have a strong admiration for Adrian Broner. You know what I'm saying? Cause he the hood favorite. He is the he is the boxer that comes from absolutely nothing. And then he made himself something. And man, when I tell you, when you see people who come from nothing and they make themselves something, man, it was, man, it was just something. You got what I'm saying? It was just awesome. But anyway. Jump on trying to do a little, uh, I'm going to call this a boxing analysis. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to do a quick boxing analysis. That's what we're going to call it. The quick boxing analysis. Okay, so round one, Cobbs started off really strong. He was throwing a lot of jabs. 
And it seemed as if that rust was affecting Adrian Broner because he was finding a difficult time finding his rhythm. You got what I'm saying? So Blair Cobbs, he was controlling that round. He had better movement. He had more jabs. So I gave that first round to Cobb. I would have called it a 10-9. So then we pushed on to um, round two. So then, you know, Broner, man, he missed. Oh, I remember he missed with this a hard left, right? And then he got floored by a left of Cobb. You got what I'm saying? So he lost his mouthpiece. He got back on his feet, but man, when I tell you he started absorbing punishment in round two, because I don't know if Blair was trying to get him out of there, but you know, I scored that one for um, Blair, of course, you know what I'm saying? So boom, Blair already up, you know what I'm saying? Two rounds, you know, 2017, pretty much. You know, so then round three, you know, Cobbs, he kept putting the pressure on AB and he was landing more punches and Adrian, he was just there. You know, it seemed like he was just trying to shake those, get get himself, snap himself back into reality of that third round. So after the third round was done, I was like, look, man, Blair, this is, he up at least 30, 26 right now. That's how I had it. You got me? So then, boom, we push on to round four. So Cobbs, he was maintaining dominance. He just was landing jabs. He was really putting Adrian Broner in a position where he could not mount up a significant offense. And I gave that round to Cobb. So then the next round come. Okay, so then round five, right? So then in round five, Adrian Broner, he seemed more aggressive. I'm like, okay, okay, Avery, I see you. You're getting more. But then guess what? Um, Blair the Flair would come back with like a flurry of punches and it would slow Adrian Brown, I mean, Broner down again. You got what I'm saying? I was like, oh man, we slow him down. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, dang. So then we pushed on the um, six. Cobbs, he was just outpacing Broner. You know what I'm saying? He just, Broner looked like he was tired. He looked like he was just hesitant. He was gun shy. That's just how it was. So boom. So then we push on. Round seven, right? Now, what I will say, Adrian Broner kept losing his mouthpiece. You know what I'm saying? He just he just was outworked by, by Blair. You got what I'm saying? So then I gave that round to, to Blair. You know, now, round eight, Adrian landed a few more shots, but nothing significant. Round nine, Broner, he was landing some body shots. You know, he outpunched Cobb, I think, for the first time. You know, but then Cobb was still throwing a flurry of punches. You got what I'm saying? Boom, round 10. When I tell you round 10 to me was the best round for Adrian Broner because he showed that he still had some doubt, some some super dog in him. You got what I'm saying? Like, he, he won the round, but it was just too late. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? So, basically, Blair the Flair Cobb dominated Adrian Broner. In 10 rounds, he scored a unanimous decision. And, hey, it was what it was. Now, despite a two-year layoff, um, Cobbs, he outclassed Broner. Broner was on a super, super layoff. You got what I'm saying? And he just was struggling to have consistent aggression. He was losing his mouthpiece. You know, it just, it was a good performance by Blair Cobbs. But, you know, it just, it was just a bad execution. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really see the game plan. I didn't really see Adrian Broner making adjustments. He was fatigued. So maybe that is influential in that, but you know, it just was what it was, but still Adrian Broner, he is still the, the hood favorite. You got what I'm saying? He is still just, he just awesome, man. You got what I'm saying? Um, Cobbs, he did, he did enough to make it where you say, you know what? Hmm, I'm interested. I, I'll look at that again. You got what I'm saying? So, you know, he did enough. Everybody is saying on social media right now that Adrian Broner needs to hang it up. Right now, from my experience with dealing with people, Adrian Broner is the realest boxer in boxing at this point in time. Now, his skill set is not there anymore. He's not as sharp as he used to be, but I think he has the mind 
where he can make it up and determine whether or not he is going to fight again. You got what I'm saying? So let that be up to him. You know, hey, he came back. It still was a successful event. He did lose. And hey, that's just how it is in life. You got what I'm saying? Hey, setbacks are a part of life. And reality is that there's no such thing as a setback. It's just a setup for a comeback. You feel what I'm saying? So I embrace all the underdogs. And if you are an underdog in life, let your status as an underdog be the fuel to your desire to accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. You feel what I'm saying? And never underestimate the power of resilience and the importance of staying true to what you know, staying true to your own vision. You feel what I'm saying? So keep pushing forward, have that motivation, have that discipline, have that determination to achieve greatness because you still have greatness in you. Even if other people say that you don't, even if people are voting against you, even if people are totally against you, I'm telling you, you have greatness inside of you. You feel what I'm saying? Don't let nobody, look, nobody else has to believe in you, but you have to believe in you. Nobody else has to believe in you, but you have to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself like you believe in God. You feel what I'm saying? But hey, leave it in the comment section. What do you think about Adrian Rona's performance? Do you think he needs to retire? Do you think he needs to hang it up? You know, one of the things that I did notice when after Brona took that loss, nobody really says, nobody who knew Adrian Brona or met Adrian Brona ever have anything bad to say about him. Everybody just want him to win. You got what I'm saying? Because man, when I tell you that guy is a good dude, he may be a bad person, but he a good dude. I know that sounds crazy, but hey, it is what it is. Leave it in the comment section. This is Power Ground Boxing, courtesy of Power Ground Sports. Reminding you to turn your dedication into domination to stay on the ground. I'll talk to you later. Peace.